Hello and thanks for joining us in this video. My name is Rohit Oshesh and I'm a Senior Analytics Specialist Solutions Architect with AWS. In this video, we'll go over one of the latest addition to Redshift Query Editor version 2 features, that is, ability of concurrent query execution across multi-tab user interface. You can either execute concurrent queries in independent isolated session for each tab, or you can also execute concurrent queries in a shared session across multiple tabs. Let's get started. Log into AWS Management Console. Go to Amazon Redshift. Click on your cluster to be queried and then click on the Query Editor V2 on the right hand side button under Query Data. For this demo, I have an older version of Query Editor V2 without the ability of concurrent query execution in one browser and another browser where you can execute concurrent queries in multiple tabs. The Query Editor version 2 is primarily used to edit and run queries, visualize results, and share your work with your team. In a tree view panel, for each of your databases, you can view its schemas. For each schema, you can view its tables, views, UDFs, and stored procedures. Now let's talk about concurrent query execution ability that this video is intended to focus at. As the name suggests, you can now execute concurrent queries using the multi-tab interface in parallel. Until now, you could only execute one query at a time. Even if you had multiple tabs, latter tab would wait for the query executing in former tab to finish before it can start executing. Let's go to the multi-tab feature enabled browser and run multiple queries in parallel. I'm using a query which makes SQL sleep 15 seconds and then return a Boolean value true. As you can see, I was able to successfully start three queries in parallel, which attributed to three concurrent connections. But the fourth one complained for too many connections. This is an account setting. Account settings are modifiable only by an admin or super user. The default value for number of connections is 10, which is also the maximum allowed value. Now, as an administrator, you may want to allow just three or maybe five connections and perhaps increase this value only when needed. For this demo, I'm changing this setting from a preset of three to the maximum value of 10, which is also the default. Please note that this change may not be effective instantly and sometimes take a minute or so up to a maximum of 10 minutes to take effect. As you can see, when we try to rerun, it still complains for the three concurrent connections because the setting change has not yet taken effect. To check current live connections, Go to settings and right above account settings you'll see connections. Open connections and then look at all active connections that are present. You can go to the current tab that you're working on or you can close the connection that is no longer in use. Now let's see how shared connections work. I've opened another browser with two different clusters available to connect. Here. I will create a temp table using former connection in a shared session that is isolated toggle switch off and will try to reference it in another tab in a shared session with the same connection. As you can see, I was able to read the temp table in a different tab of the same connection. But if I change the connection, I will not be able to read the temp table even though the isolated toggle switch is still off. So that's how the shared session would work in multiple tabs with isolated session toggle switch off. Now, everything that we have covered so far would also be applicable in SQL notebooks if you use them. That is, you can execute queries in parallel in multiple sessions using isolated or shared sessions within notebooks. Here's an example. As you can see, I was able to successfully query the sleep SQL across two different tabs within notebooks. Well, the usual single tab functionality still holds good, 
each tab would still present results as data or charts to your liking. You can switch your results to charts and download them for analysis. You can still switch between dark and light theme. You can still export results of the query up to 5 MB, just like before. However, you would still require to check the export results in account settings as an admin or super user. Now, I must mention there's one small difference from the existing user interface. The username, which used to be in the header part next to your cluster name, will now be available when you click the info icon next to the cluster name in the tree view panel. Save some real estate on the user interface, doesn't it? This feature was requested by a lot of our customers and we hope this will help you with your tasks and workloads on a day-to-day -day basis. We will keep adding more features for you and bring you more content in this Query Editor version 2 series. Thank you so much for watching.